Right, hello, my name is Tim from Wales and I want to talk to you about a host of new features to fully control your privacy in Komoot. Now, I've done a previous video on Komoot a few months ago and uh, I'm a big fan of this app. I think it's got uh, a really nice interface. I think it gives you some interesting information and data when you're planning and um, when you've recorded rides. I'm not going to go into any of that here. I might do another video on it or you, we can maybe ask me some questions below but I'm not going to go into that here. What I want to do today was specifically just talk about some of the new privacy features that they've just um, they've just introduced which I think makes this app a lot more powerful now because as it stands you either set your rides, activities, walks, hikes, whatever as private or public and you set them and you can and you can edit those then afterwards so all of mine if I do anything on Komoot they're all set as private mainly because I ride especially during lockdown over the last six months or so I've been riding from home now that's not much use because anybody that then follows my profile will be able to see pretty much where I live which isn't great from a security perspective um, so that has meant that I've left everything as private other than if I've gone away and ridden and then I've put those as public. There are a whole host of new privacy features in Komoot which I think are going to make this a lot more a usable app because you then you don't have to, you can be a little bit more forgetful if you like rather than worrying about uh, wherever you've been whether you've left rides as private or public or whatever because if you've got a privacy zone set around your home or your work address if you use a bike for commuting then um, uh, you don't need to worry about setting them private or whatnot so um, we'll have a quick look at the app now and we'll jump in and do some screen recording and while that's just setting up as a screen recording uh, please remember to subscribe um, I'm getting really close to a nice milestone on the uh, channel and It'd be great if, um, yeah, if I can get there sooner rather than later. So thank you very much if you're already subscribing, and if you haven't subscribed, please go do it now. Right, here we go. Let's have a quick look. So in the settings section, you can now see there's a privacy option, and you've now got account privacy, tours and collections, blocked accounts, and privacy zones. So we'll just start from the top. Account privacy. You can set your entire account as public or private, and there are other layers within this which we'll go through but basically if you want your account to be seen you have to set it as public if you don't want anybody to ever find you then set it as private it's pretty straightforward really you can even have yourself um, come up in the search results or not as well so you could have a public account but not be able to be found in search results so you can send people the links to it but um, they won't be able to find you if they search for you I just assume that makes sense Right, tours and collections. So these are basically your um, uh, your activities. So you can set, as you can see on mine, I've currently got mine set only as um, with maximum privacy, which is only me. So at the moment, by default, anything that I create, as in plan a route or anything that I record, is all automatically set as private to myself. So that's great. Um, means that nobody can see anything that I do unless I actually want to make them public. Then there's another option on here now which I can actually allow close friends. Now I don't have many friends that are using Komoot at the moment. Everyone's still on the Strava train so um, at the moment I don't have any close friends that are using it. Um, or you can then open it up so that anybody that can see your profile can see everything that you're loading. So this means by default you go for a ride, you record it, it automatically becomes public and anyone can see it. Okay. You've got personal collections so you can add things to a personal collection so this means let's say um, you're planning a weekend away and you're planning a couple of rides over that weekend you can plan those routes and you can then keep them secret or you can allow only close friends access or you can allow everyone access same as everything else but these sit in a separate part so you've got planned things and things that you've actually done so you can actually set these ones that you've got planned for the future as as private Blocked accounts, I've not actually blocked anybody yet because I'm not really using it in that sort of social um, platform as, as such at the moment, but that's where they would show. And then the new bit is the privacy zone, the, 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 and the really useful bit now is the, is the privacy zones, which means that you could then set your account to be a bit more public, and in the um, 
So now you can set your account to be a bit more public, knowing that if you've set up your privacy zones correctly, that no one's going to know exactly where you live or exactly where you work or exactly where that secret digging spot is that you've been building in the woods or something. So um, this is this is the cool bit. So um, manage privacy zones. This means you have to actually go to the website rather than the app. And then, um, as you can see here, I've got two zones selected. I've got home and I've got secret place. Now, the secret place is just one that I've just picked up randomly just to, just to test how it works. So I'll just delete that one for a minute and we'll set up another one. So add another privacy zone. Let's call it secret trail number one. There we go. Now we go and find the location. So, I don't know, let's just be a bit mad and random here. Let's go and pretend that we are riding somewhere in North Wales. Here we go. There's a little spot here just outside of Blynafestiniog. I don't know exactly where that is. This might even be the Antistiniog Trail Centre. Anyway, let's just say this year is my... So we've picked the spot here somewhere just outside of Blynafestiniog. I don't know where it is. We'll hit save and automatically it's created some random polygon around it. Polygon, is that the right name? Random polygon around the uh, the trail. We can hit regenerate and give you some different shapes. So, you know, you might find that the trail that you want is you want to hide a certain access point. If you just keep it in this regenerate, it might give you specifically the little bit you want. It's not quite as flexible as say the Strava app, where you can set like a a, a circular sort of um, uh, perimeter, uh, but at least it gets you there. So. There we go, so we've added privacy zones, we've been able to set our profile as public or private, we can go and select specific activities and groups of activities as private or, or public, or you can actually give just close friends access to stuff. So, if I... so we've got a route, I've got a route that I've selected that I actually, I sent a, a tweet out to it just to sort of test a few things, and I'll just go and find that now. So go online to my activity that I've shared and you'll see on this activity except the route actually starts and ends at this point here whereas I live in this little village nobody can see exactly where but um, the privacy zone has stopped people from seeing exactly where that is so I know that probably sounds a bit obvious but there you go anyway Kamut have a whole host now of privacy features and if you've got any questions about any of them or you've tried them and they work or they don't work for you or you've got any other questions about Kamut leave them below and I will try my best to answer them and um, yeah I will see you in another video and please remember to subscribe